Now, if this car park robbery isn't brazen enough, take a closer look at the CCTV. It turns out at least one of the alleged crooks may have had form and should have been monitored by authorities. Twas two days before Christmas when, quite late at night, two figures from the dark creep into the light. Snips in hand and a smile on her face, this naughty pair sneak into the place. What would be your message to these people? Don't come here. This isn't a delivery from Father Christmas, just a couple of accused car park crooks doing some late night shopping, leaving behind a revealing clue. Someone's got a bike under the Christmas tree. That yeah. isn't theirs. Two bikes, in fact, and a set of spares from behind this storage cage in the basement of the Westmark Apartments in Milton, near Brisbane's CBD. It's a pretty well-guarded bike cage. It is. And they've still found their way in. They still find a way in, yeah. Cutting across the car park once the man and woman are in, they struggle to get out. In the lift, this Christmas Grinch takes a quick look at the hall while his partner, Mrs Grinch, waits downstairs. When the doors open for her, she steps directly under a camera. That's when it becomes clear. What stood out to you in that footage? Her jewellery. She's wearing a nice ankle bracelet. These people are supposed to be monitored, aren't they? Well, chances are they're on parole and they're still committing crimes. And isn't that the problem that we're having? So how do we solve it? We've got to get tougher. Tony Millman is the building manager at Westmark. After six years here and a career in real estate, he's seen it all. But even he was surprised when the accused bike bandits returned two weeks later on New Year's Day. This time, the male alleged offender strikes up a conversation with a resident who invites him in. The resident telling a current affair he'd been out for a few drinks and was waiting for some mates to pop around, so thought nothing of it. Eventually becoming suspicious when his new friend invites another. The trio get acquainted in the elevator, but it's alleged this is no more than an opportunistic scheme. And he's taken them up to his unit, had a couple of drinks, and, and when they've been leaving, they've stolen his car keys. Unbeknownst to the resident who took this photo of the woman's ankle bracelet before they left. For the second time in as many weeks, the pair strikes again, accused of taking their host's car as a parting gift. It's pretty brazen, isn't it? In this case, obviously, she's not fearful of what the next punishment would be. Is that frustrating? She's out and about at midnight wandering the suburbs, uh, stealing motor vehicles. So, yeah, it is very frustrating. And given what's unfolded in this building over the last few weeks, the burning question remains. How was someone wearing an ankle bracelet able to roam the streets through the early hours of the morning without alerting authorities? Something is going wrong with this ankle monitoring system. Who, who looks at it? Uh, who reports on it? Who's responsible? When I look at that vision there, I just see a, a wider picture of the crime epidemic that we have in Queensland. Criminologist and former detective Terry Goldsworthy. If you have a good monitoring system that has a good response to those kind of alarms when they trigger, uh, the studies have shown us that they can actually decrease recidivism or repeat offending of people who have those uh, devices placed on them. But that's only going to occur if you have a good response system and protocols in place to do that. Queensland police have now charged a 36-year-old woman and 31-year-old man over the stolen car. They've also reviewed their investigation and say the alleged offenders were not being monitored by the QPS. Queensland Corrective Services telling a current affair, while they don't comment on individual cases for privacy reasons, every offender has personalised supervision requirements based on their level of risk to the community. Should QCS become aware of further offending, we can seek to suspend parole. There shouldn't be a second or third time because there should be action taken in relation to the first time. They really need to be locked up and they need to be afraid of what the penalty will be and they're not.